Hell yeah. I didn't know if we were ever going to get this ever again, or at least anytime soon. But who ties back? Guys, everyone, welcome back to Form of Therapy. This is The Culture Study. I'm the channel's video producer and your host. You can call me PD. And today we are checking out Boom by Huta. And I am so incredibly excited. Listen, man. Getting into Huta was the first time was a life-changing experience. Um, Minyok is like one of my favorite idols because if you are if you know what he's capable of, obviously, whether you're a B2B fan, Huta fan, or you watched Kingdom, <laughs> Minyok is like a quintuple threat. You know, he writes and composes his own music. He raps. He sings. He can also change his voice. Like, he changes his voice. Like, mid-rap, he can change his voice so it sounds like there's two rappers. Or, like, he can change his voice mid-singing so it sounds like there's multiple vocalists. Like, he carries everything, like, at, at least with um, uh, his debut, Ya, um, he covered like all the positions that would be in an ordinary full boy group, but as one person, and then he can dance his goddamn ass off. He is an incredible, incredible, incredible solo act. And so I'm very excited to check this out with you all today. And you know, I love B2B. So, you know, there's that additional factor. Guys, uh, I'm very excited to check out Boom. Uh, but before we actually get into Boom real quick, let's do some, let's do some housekeeping real quick. Guys, if you enjoy our content and you want to support the channel, visit our Patreon. If you go to our Patreon, we do bonus reactions to, one, listening parties. I'm sure Huta released an album with this promotion as well. So if he did, we will definitely be doing a listening party for that. So come join us on our Patreon to check that out with us. Of course, you don't have to support us monetarily if you don't want to. As I mentioned, we actually watched Kingdom, you know, which B2B was on. So if you want to check that out or... All sorts of other shows. We do reactions for variety shows, survival shows like Kingdom or um, K-dramas, anime. So if you want to check all that out and more, come join us over on our Patreon. Of course, you don't have to support us monetarily if you don't want to. Just simply hit the like button down below. Make sure you subscribe and we'll, we're just super grateful. All right, let's get into the video. This is Boom by Huta and this is your form of therapy. Oh. Oh. How to go track a dark one? Got bony step back on. With to me, my girl. Giants walk your body. I'm so I'm so attracted to this man. On a spiritual and a visual level. Wow! Sorry. I'm sorry. That was right into the mic. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm losing it. Boom, 
I'm gonna be honest, I stopped paying attention about 30 seconds ago. My brain is like completely fried now. He is, he is insane. He is insane, man. <sighs> my God. All the soloist men in my life. Temin, Kang Daniel, Wono. And the list goes on. But there is something about Huta. <laughs> Where he takes me to another dimension. <gasps> okay. Ooh, okay. Wow. Um, hey, remember how I said he could transform his voice? How was that? How was that? Because I loved it. Uh, I mean, he... So some, something I really liked about his debut with Ya is that he could... Once, yeah, like slip from like a really like sharp, like almost like assaulting rap to like really beautiful vocals real quick. But also even within his vocals, like his range was actually kind of like really stupid for like, I mean, anyone in general, but he's also the rapper, you know, in B2B. And it's so crazy, like... It's so crazy, like, he really leaned into that even more this comeback. Like, he leaned way more into playing with his voice. Like, those, I mean, that was kind of like the spotlight of the song. The, the, hi, is so incredible. I don't know how he does it. He's so good. He is, I love B2B, man. I love Iminyuk, man. I love these guys, man. But Huta. He is just something so different. And, oh my God, the the pacing of the song was fantastic. Uh, the music video was great. I mean, it was such a great trippy visual ride, but it also wasn't like incredibly uh, noisy and complex. Like the, something that's happening right now, and this is not a bad thing, but like you're getting a lot of like these wild transitions in K-pop, you know, uh, you're getting like that, you know, like the very kind of messy scrapbook editing type of stuff like you see in like Idol's Tomboy, remember? That's not a bad thing, but it's cool to see like really trippy visuals that are super clean as well. Like right now we're going through like a grunge phase a little bit in K-pop and that's cool, but like he was like just slipping in and out, you know, in that first half of the song. <sighs> okay, um, let's watch that again. Um, I'm going to try to pay attention. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest, like the last 30 seconds of that music video, I stopped paying attention, both audio and video wise. Like I was just so gone at that point. Like it was actually too much of a chemical reaction in my brain. I couldn't process anymore. Um, but uh, we're going to watch it again and we're going to watch it properly this time. And uh, I think to do that, I've got to sort of like put my gay away. I, I have to take the gay out of my brain and then put it in a box somewhere else. And then once the camera is off, I can unleash the gay again. Um, let's check it out. 
oh, it's, a, oh, it's an album too. Oh my God, I'm so excited. If you guys have never heard his B-sides, uh, first of all, check it out. He has a song with Soyeon from Idol <laughs> that is like one of the greatest songs of all time. Um, you should totally check it out. It's called Hangout, by the way. Oh, at a certain point in the video, I think towards the end, he actually puts the mask back on. So it starts with him taking it off. Interesting. Um, all right. So this set already, when I first saw it, I was like, ooh, we're getting like a, it's got a mix of like a dojo, but also like a billionaire's evil lair sort of like concrete vibe to it. I dig it. Oh, the start is so powerful. Wow, the start is so powerful. He's like a king and he's on a throne. Ooh, zoom out the snap. Ooh. Ooh, wait, those are arcade machines. Wow, hold on. Okay, so set design is actually fascinating. Actually, hold on. I think we got to go back more. I want to I wanted to see what he like lit up. Ooh, okay, so it's the lighting above. Ooh, that that was a subtle transition. There's a lot of wild, zany transitions in this one, but you gotta appreciate the subtle ones too, because those are sexy. Those are those are the ones when you're watching and not pausing every five seconds, like we're doing right now. Obviously, we're doing it to study the video, but it's quick little moments like that. Like obviously, there are like really cool edits and big edits, but it's really actually these small ones and how you place it and how often you do that really actually like like mentally like subconsciously it makes you like think like holy moly this music video is so fluid and amazing and transitions like here right there that boom and they did i think a subtle hold on they did like a subtle effect yeah see they don't just they don't just Ooh, ooh, let me explain this transition for a bit. It's not just a flash, which it, you know, it, it, it's so quick it looks like it. What they do is they actually digitally zoom in like a little bit right here. You're going to see, right? They zoom in, right? So it gives you like a, like this, but it's so fast. You're not even going to fully translate that, but subconsciously you're going to kind of like interpret it. And then there's the flash, but... They also then added like a kind of like a shaking effect on his. You can see like it's blurry, right? But it's not just blurry because it's blurry. It's blurry from like the vibration. See, see how it's like shaking. You can see like the like like the like the vibration edit that they put on top of it that makes it look like that. That was really good. Ooh, great camera work. Oh. Great shot here, too. Oh, great camera work. Great shot. Fuck. Ooh. Oh, that's what that is. I see. Oh, this is the arcade machine. We're oh, this is so clever. We're we're this angle is we're looking at him from inside the arcade machine. Oh, oh, so well done. So clever. Whoa! Okay, that was, that was like one of my favorite shots in a music video ever. Just like how fluid that was. Boom, <laughs> Can we? Was that a cut or was that an actual? Let's see. 
Was there a cut in there, or did they actually, from this far away, move in on him? Okay, that looked like a cut, but hold on. Yeah, that's a cut, okay. Yeah, they cut here, but still, this is still pretty far. Well, it looks like they're shooting this on a pretty wide lens, maybe somewhere between like a 24 and a 35, and then... Ooh, 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 that was smooth. Great too. I gotta say, I I really want to compliment um, two aspects of the production because <clears throat> is one of those music videos where they essentially only have two sets and that's it. Like they're using the same sets for the close ups, for the dance, for the everything, everything, everything. Um, but I would not call this a low budget video either. What I think the team does really, really well because there's very few changes in sets, very few changes in the story, which could make a video feel long and dragging and bore the audience. So what they did really, really well, I think one, their director did an amazing job. I think to direct this video in a way that it's interesting and it keeps people titillated throughout the entire viewing experience, I, it, while only keeping the mainly two sets, I think is an incredible feat. And I think that's really well done. The editing team. I think the editing team did such a superb job at making these transitions. Like even just right here. Boom, even just, whoa, what was, the fuck was that? Hold on, sorry. Even just like right here, if you look at this shot right here. Like even just, it's, they cut, they cut on this and then it cuts to right there. Their editing is really, really on point. This is a very simple match cut, but still it's edits like this that really make this music video shine. It's not just like the crazy transitions. Obviously those are fantastic too, but those are the things that you can notice. Like obviously the stuff that they do on a subliminal level on like the careful little level, they did so well. And so I really want to compliment the editing team. Um, I mean, I think the production team, the lighting team is fantastic. I mean, just lighting these, having to light these woods and the way they're lighting it too, I think is really difficult. So I think they did an amazing job. Ooh, that was a transition. Ooh, see that too. Three cuts right there, three cuts. And so uh, they had to shoot a lot of B-roll. They had to shoot a lot of B-roll. So, wow, I, I, I think... This team did an amazing job producing his video. Ooh, he like teleported. Oh. Wow, that's such an unconventional angle. Hold on. This is such an unconventional angle. Wow, you never see this. Wow, 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 this looks so good. like the cameraman is so basically they're like squatting and they're like moving like this whoa under him by the way they're shooting like from here like down to up whoa 
10 out of 10. Music, music video, 10 out of 10. Um, I'll admit, uh, I, I've been filming today and I have ran into some very unsatisfying music videos today. And so I think it is, this is like the ultimate just Ah, sigh of relief. Like, ah, good filmmaking. Ah, amazing filmmaking. Ah, artistry at work. Like my brain, like the, just the chemical serotonin boost I'm getting from watching the art that is boom, both on a musical level and a visual level is impeccable. Just impeccable. Like 10 out of 10. Like what, what can I say? It was perfect. And... I really did not think that Huta could top Ya. I really didn't think he could like, like maybe, maybe like he like will make a good song, but like maybe he lucked out on the whole like insaneness of Ya, the whole switching voices, switching between the rap and the singing. Maybe it was just that song. No, I, I, how do you, how do you top Ya? How do you top Ya? And then he came out with Boom and he, Blew my mind, really. Boom is absolutely incredible. Um, and it makes me want to say, like, I think Huta's, like, my favorite soloist. Like, that's just, like, on a personal level in terms of, like, when it comes to male soloists, I think Huta's, like, my favorite male soloist. And in the way that, like, he makes me, like, excited and feel things in a way that, like, no other artist can. Doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Doesn't matter. He, and I'm sure we all have different K-pop preferences. And so I'm just saying this for the other Huta enthusiasts out there. For anybody else, like it's not just because Huta's, you know, you know, he looks the way he does. Yes, is he hot? Yes. But what I'm attracted to with Minyuk is not just his abs, not just his body, but his mind, his artistry is just oozing. He is like the... He is like the final boss character, you know? Like, he's just so powerful, and he's my favorite, I think, I gotta say. Um, I, I, you know, I usually wait, like, two comebacks, but holy crap, like, how long ago was Ya? I don't know if I can wait for a second comeback to really make that decision, but after hearing his previous album, which I did, and I'll take a listen to the Boom second album as well, but after listening to that album, I will say for sure whether or not... Uh, Huta is my favorite male soloist. He's just incredible. And he might even, you know, be up there as being like one of my favorite soloists. And so I want to pass the question off to you guys. What did you guys think of Boom by Huta? Is, is there anyone in the audience who's watching this where you can say, Huta is my favorite male solo artist? I have a lot of people vying for that spot. That's not spot. Spot. And it is difficult to choose because you've got the likes of like Wono, you know, coming into the mix, fighting for that crown, Kang Daniel, you know, Temin, as I mentioned before, uh, Key, you know, there's so many, there's so many. And like, I'm trying to get into Onu now. So like, it's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But um, I really enjoyed this. I want to know what you guys thought about Boom. And for those of you who loved Ya, what do you guys think about Boom in comparison to Ya? What do you think of the shock factor? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to support the channel, once again, we're going to be doing a listening party for Boom uh, for Huta. So if you want to check that out, join our Patreon. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to actually be in August. 
Uh, we, we do like um, listening parties a month later. So if you want to check that out, you if that that listening party, you're going to want to join our August Patreon. But we also have tons of other content. We have other listening parties that we're releasing this month. But we also check out variety contents, survival shows. We checked out Kingdom, as I mentioned, that B2B was in. Uh, K-dramas, anime. So if you want to check all that out and more, join our Patreon. Of course, you don't have to support us monetarily if you don't want to. Just simply hit the like button down below. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment. Let us know uh, what you guys thought about the video. Um, what you guys thought. What did you guys think about Boom in comparison to Ya? Uh, go ahead and subscribe over here. Hit that notification bell. Whenever Huta has another comeback, I will most definitely be reacting to it. So make sure you subscribe. All right, guys. Thank you for checking it out. Uh, you can check out our other videos over here. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, guys.